prior to um, that experience, I was always living through the voice or the eyes of other people without realizing it. And um, I was always chasing your acceptance, her acceptance, his acceptance. I didn't realize that that voice existed in me primarily. And that was the hardest thing to uh, step through for me. Welcome to the More Business, More Life podcast. And today we have Lee Purcell, and we're going to be talking about how you can be present in the moment and how that gives you power in your decisions and your thoughts, how that can uh, grow business and life all by doing that. Thanks for being here, Lee. Thanks, brother. It's beautiful to have you. It's always amazing talking to you. Oh, likewise, man. It's great to be back. And um, I just wrote a haiku about more business for life, and I'd love to share it with you. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. In, in case nobody knows what a haiku is, it's um, just three lines, five syllables, then seven syllables, and then five syllables. More business, more life. Blend these two and find freedom. You have now arrived. That's beautiful. That's, so if I would have added a syllable to more business, more life, then we wouldn't have been able to do this. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Oh my I gosh. Have, I would have had to cut it out. <laughs> it's cool because um, um, Lasha, my partner, she first um, exposed me. Well, she first challenged me to start writing haikus as a way for me to learn structure because she loves my poetry and loves how, like, showed me how if I can learn to condense my poetry into a system, into a box, that'll teach me more structure in life. And it really has. It's so amazing uh, pressure, you know, yeah. that comes from, from that. Like, so when I, when I was making my films, I was an independent filmmaker, so I didn't have big studio million dollar budgets and we'd want to do things like the million dollar films. And so we'd have things in the script and we're like, how are we going to do this? We don't have the budget to do it the way we, we, you know, that it would normally be done. And through our, the pressure, I really believe some of those scenes that we thought there was no way we could do it because we had to do it differently and we had to have that pressure on to structure in a different way. We, those, those scenes were, were some of the best in the film. Cool. Were you able to see it like that during the pressure or was it after upon reflection that you were like, oh, wow, I really appreciated those moments? You know, it's a mix. So I would say some, I was on set and I was like, this is really happening, you know, like seeing it (laughs) unfold. And like, we actually are doing it. Oh my gosh. You know, this is the one thing I thought we weren't going to be able to do. And then others were uh, my first two feature films. Well, actually the only two feature films that I produced, I also edited. So I was the editor. And when I was in the edit uh, suite, then sometimes I realized like I would still leave and I'd be like, oh, we, we didn't do it the way we wanted to, but we got the scene done. And then when I was in the edit suite, I was like, this is better. It actually works better in the story. So yeah. it, uh, it allows that. And then, you know, it reminds me of like, you know, crises and things that happen as well. Like that pressure of change. That's when inventions happen. If you look at history, right. And, uh, it, you know, anytime we have pressure on ourselves, it, it, you know, it makes it a necessity and no longer like a wish, right? So, you know, when, when things are just normal or you're in your comfort zone, you're just going along, do do do, and you know, it's all good. But then when something changes, puts that pressure on us, then it forces almost in a necessity way to, to make that change. And, and I think a lot of beautiful things uh, come out of that. That's amazing. And being able to see it like that, that'll enable you to actually appreciate every step along the way. As long as you can see it like that while it's happening, it's the same pressure, the same action steps, the same response, except a different experience while it's happening. That's absolutely true. And that's why I love my tagline, choose gratitude, create freedom. And you ended the haiku with finding freedom. And then so all along the way, as we want to have more business and more life, which even is its own pressure, because so many people think, oh, I'm going to have business and I'm going to make money and I'm going to make millions. And then they think when they get there to that position in their career or that monetary thing that they'll have what they want. And then they're like, whoa, I don't, you know, and they forgot that whole part of life that has to be in the recipe. You know, if you want lemon cake and you make the cake and you forget to put the lemons in, 
you know, like, oh, I'll put the lemons in later, you know, then the lemons aren't in the cake. I mean, you know, so if you want your life in your life, right, which is, I'm using the word life as like what you want, like how you want it to be, you have to put that in the recipe. And that's why it's more business and more life at the same time. And then, and then you have the gratitude along the way to appreciate all results. That's what like people that are working with you and like devouring your content, that's an advantage that they all have because the journey it took you to have those realizations People won't have to go through, especially those that are actually like, like, like listening and hearing your journey. And that's the gift that you're giving to the world right now. Well, thank you, Lee. And you give a lot of gifts too, which we're going to get to in a moment. But you, you made me think of with that said, you know, many times, you know, I lost everything like more than, you know, more than once I've lost a lot, you know, millions and millions of dollars that I had on quest to earn. And so I've been through that having money and then realizing that's, this isn't what I want it like what the hell and then to lose it all and a lot of people say wow that's really it right you got to lose it all to to learn how to have it and that may be true for some of us but if like what you just said lee if we can listen to others and see what they went through maybe you can have it all without losing it all yeah. uh, maybe you don't have to go through all the pain that some of us have gone through to be able to realize how good you have it you know because that's what happens when you have such adversity that's why so many people with much adversity you see them you know becoming professional athletes uh, you know building record companies i mean you name it like so many people have gone from the streets of nothing to something because there was no other option, right? It's either die or get up, yeah. die or get up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and I know you have a tremendous amount of story, Lee. So, you know, um, it's amazing how far you've come as well. And like right now, being able to be in such a positive mindset and have your family and all these amazing things, but it wasn't always that way, right? Never, never is, never is, man. It's um, It's always a wild journey, but as long as like, Every time I'm looking at myself, I'm always able to learn through those pressure moments, through just the, the heavy moments that happen. And you, you see the diamonds in, in, in those pressure-filled moments. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal to just keep going and really appreciate it along the way. Well, and how did you start appreciating it? Like, I mean, when did you notice these things? When I really noticed it was um, after my first ayahuasca journey in 2013 in the jungle. I... Um, one of my intentions was to eliminate fear from my life. That's what I had written down. And I didn't really understand. I, had, you know, I, would, I went down there just to kind of explore this, this plant medicine that I heard somebody talking about once. And I really didn't have any idea as to what I was doing. And they said, write down some intentions. And one of my intentions, I just thought it would be efficient if I eliminate fear from my life because, well, then nothing will stop me. You know, I'll just keep going and keep going and keep going. And what happened is um, that first ceremony, it was all fear. Like I thought I had died. And um, in those experiences, it, it gets that real at times where like there, there, there's no talking you out of the fact that you have died and it's a terrifying and sometimes traumatic um, experience. But coming to the other side of it, seeing through that and learning, wow, I didn't actually die. So the whole experience was me facing this idea of my demise, this whole idea that I created in my head that I had died. And I came out with a lot more clarity on the other side. And that allowed me to look around and say, wow, this is actually life. Like, why would I be afraid of dying when I'm alive right now? Right. And so it's, um, that's been a huge anchor for me anytime I'm in a heavy process, anytime I'm just going through something, feeling a mental block, anything like that, I can always go back to that moment where I thought, it was the end of me and it actually wasn't. It was, it was in fact the beginning of something way more beautiful. It's, it's quite, a, it is quite amazing. You know, like I used to say that I'm going to keep learning until the day I die. And I, and I, I know that that saying doesn't even make sense to me anymore because the day I do die, it'll be like opening up, you know, like, cause if you think about, you know, like Wayne Dyer says it, you know, we are, um, we're, you know, a lot of people think we're human beings trying to be spiritual, but the reality is we're spiritual beings living this human experience. So, yeah. you know, when that, when that dies, and it also reminds me of the Shipibo people from <clears throat> Peru, right? I, the saying that I'll never forget uh, when I learned about them was that, you know, as their adoles adolescents become adults, the one thing they want them to understand is that you can't live until you die. 
Yeah. Is the saying that was translated to me yeah. from their language. And, you know, it's so true, right? So if we're fearing death, it kind of comes back to that gratitude. Like, you know, um, for me, it's like about the present moment, which I know you and I've talked about before. So maybe we can get <clears> some of this on recording here. <throat> like there's so many times Lee and I've been together, we should have recorded. We should always have a microphone when we talk. So the thing, um, <laughs> I was doing gardening yesterday and I was like, I should record this. <laughs> yeah, always have a microphone, right? Like always have a microphone. <laughs> I mean, if we're here to share our lives with others, then what are we doing? So I'm definitely picking up my level of content right now out to, out to everyone. Um, so I was just wanted to bring up the present moment because I think words matter, as you know, right? And being a poet, you know it all too well. The, the present moment is called a, is a present, right? It's the same spelling. It's the same word. A present is a gift, right? And then if we, were, if we regret the past, right, we're kind of wallowing in what happened and uh, we're not in the present moment. Or if we fear the future, then mm -hmm. we're worrying about that and then we're not in, in, in that. So... You know, it's kind of like in that saying, it's interpreted in another layer. I'm, you know, I know there's so many things in like the fear of death, but if we're fearing that, then we're not in the present fully, yeah. right? So, so ultimately, all this does is zero us in to this present moment, right? I just took a breath because it's like breathing in this moment. It's 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 it is a gift, and when we fully do that, then I fe then we can fe feel the full life. You know, it's almost yes. like letting life out of us when we go towards fearing or wa wandering too far ahead or regretting or looking too far behind us. Then we're missing this moment. Yeah, yeah, and the the, the cosmic joke about the fear of death is like it's never going to happen because death actually isn't in this moment. Death is in the future and the future doesn't actually arrive. And there's going to be two things that's going to happen when, um, when, when, when I die, when somebody dies is either there's going to be some type of afterlife, some type of awesome heaven or spiritual afterlife where I'm a spirit or a ghost or I'm in heaven or what, whatever it is, right? That's going, that will either happen which is awesome because then I won't have actually died. I'll see that life is eternal and I'll live on or it's just nothing. And then I won't even be around to know that I've died. So I, I, I will never actually experience death. It's, it's impossible. So living in fear of something that I will actually never experience is, I would, I used to call it insanity. Now I just call it a cosmic joke. <laughs> it, it, it is amazing to be put that way because the pain of death will probably be, if you have pain, it will be your own fear leading up to that moment and the anxiety and all the things you build up. But then once you pass, I do believe this too, then it'll be complete relief because you're not, no longer constrained. And that's why when you look at some of my, my elders and my family lineage, when they've passed away, it was like, it was, it was meant to be, it was time. The body was done and there was nothing more like, you know, for them to do like where you couldn't, I remember my uncle Jed, my great uncle Jed, when he passed away, he was funniest man. Like I, when I was a little kid, he almost made me pee my pants so many times because he made me laugh so hard. It was the funniest guy in our family. And he was always a storyteller. Maybe that's where I get it. And I always looked up to him because he would like hold the whole family in a story for, for like sometimes over an hour, like, and everyone's listening in awe to his stories. Uh, but I remember his mind never left. The last visit I had with him, he was crippled. He said, Steve, getting to the bathroom is more than an hour job. Yeah. He's like, I think my body's done. Wow. And uh, he was, his wit never left. Yeah. And, yep. you know, and I looked at that, but he was, he was right. He was like, what more do I have when I can't go to the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So he knew. And then shortly after that, he passed away because he gave in. My wife's grandfather, when he turned 89, I don't know why, he had better health than her grandmother. Her grandmother lived to 96. And he, at 89, he said, I won't, I won't turn 90. Just want to let everyone know. Like at his birthday, he told everyone. And then sure enough, he died that year. Like, you know, so part of it is choice too. Like, I, wow. you know, you can, you can let go. I think all, like if life is choice, right? This is getting deep, brother. We're going really deep. So yes. we, uh, it always happens. We, uh, we, if we, if life is choice, right? Because I, I do believe we have choice. That's one of the gifts of this, of this life. And, you know, then how is that not a choice either? And that's hard for people to swallow because, 
Um, but if you look at like people with cancer, um, there are people that have like I've seen people with stage four cancer, you know, uh, crazy things, cancer through the body, and then they survive. And and really, you have to only imagine that they chose to live. And then you have other people that don't even have as bad of cancer, and 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 they might exit. You know, and and uh, and I'm not trying to be uncompassionate. I mean, people go through things, and everyone's life goes through their own thing, but. I'm just putting all my own conclusions and you can conclude what you want. But my belief is that what I've seen in my family is those that have wanted to stay living, they have and for a long time. <laughs> and those that were ready to leave, they basically told us they were ready to go. It's I got a cousin right now. He's had stage four lung cancer for well over a year and a half. And he's not supposed to be here right now. And he, it, it, it's un, the last time I seen him, he, he, he hasn't even stopped smoking cigarettes. And I look at him and I'm thinking, how many people have probably lectured you on this? I'm like, I can't lecture you. They, like, you're making your choice. And I looked at him. I was just like, you know what? You're absolutely incredible. And he goes, why? I'm like, anybody can beat lung cancer. But can you do it with a cigarette in your mouth? You're the man. <laughs> We're not still, promoting smoking with not, not at all. Not at all. What I get it, but I get like, it, but I get it in the this, moment. This will of life to just keep going and keep, and he's just determined, just absolutely determined, you know. And wasn't uh, it George Burns? He lived over a hundred or like to ninety nine. I think he broke a hundred five. 105 George Burns, you know, whiskey and and uh, cigars, like yeah. all the way yeah. till the end, man. And he said, um. The reason he's been able to live so long is because he always had a reason to get up in the morning. That's so true. Yeah. I'm, that's yeah. it. Wow, that's amazing that you knew that quote and everything. That's oh, awesome. you know, um, my football coach from when I was a child, he recently passed, um, what was it, last year? And I went to visit him in the hospital. And I hadn't seen him in a bunch of years, you know. And I looked at him and I said, you know, 16 years ago, you were on your deathbed. And I was in the same situation visiting you and I was saying goodbye. What, what, what is this? Like, how are we still here 16 years later and you're going through this again? And he goes, he brings it back to the lessons as a kid. He goes, Lee, and just the, you know, the football coach voice, like Lee. And he's still, still this guy. He goes, it's just like football. You got to stay committed. Yeah, that, and that was him, and that was what made it go. It so. was phenomenal to be able to ask him such deep questions. At one point, he goes, why do you have all these questions? And I looked at him and said, you know, it's, um, this is a very sensitive subject for basically everybody, and you've always been able to answer my questions. And um, death is a, is a topic that many of us are afraid of, and I know that this is firsthand experience. You can actually answer my questions and tell me about this experience that you're having right now. And he was more than willing. It was, it was very powerful for me to be able to um, say my goodbye that way, like to really dive in deep with him in the moment, not beat around the bush and really experience that depth, you know? And um, when that's, that's amazingly, he looked at me, he looked at me and he said, um, you know, Lee, um, you're going to go far in this world, but, don't go too fast. He goes, be patient with life because if you fly up really quick, he goes, you're going to smack the ground really hard and that's okay, but you don't have to. Take your time. Just give him a moment for that one. That's brilliant. <laughs> right? They always say if your highs are too high, your lows will be really low. Right? When I was um, staying with you um, a few years ago and I was in Fairfax, I was walking by this um, old man. He, he's in his 70s or 80s. And I love asking people for wisdom, you know. And I stopped this man. And I said, excuse me, you know, I'm, I'm 30 years old. What have you learned? You, you got like an extra 40 or some odd years on me. What have you learned in that time that you wish you knew at my age that you can pass on to me right now? And he looked at me and he said, look around and appreciate every single moment because you have no clue how fast this thing goes. 
Yeah. It's, it's so true. I have uh, turtles all over my desk, like art of turtles, like <laughs> sculptures and stuff. So, you know. <laughs> That's a good reminder. You get and, some. And, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it's been kind of my, uh, it's been definitely that energy. And, and I've been feeling like the eagle too. It's like slow down to see more. So yeah. it's like uh, turtle eagle friendship, friendship yeah. rings. And that, that came very clear to me in a meditation, actually. Um, I was just sitting in Lotus, and I don't know if you've ever had like divine revelations just sitting with your eyes closed, and just this message shows up as from something beyond you. And um, that message for me at that time was slow down to step in the fast lane. Wow. It's been a very um, powerful practice to see that come to fruition. The more I slow down and I focus on really um, being impeccable with everything that I do and in no way, shape or form am I perfect right now, yet I'm growing with that. And the more I do that, the, 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 the easier things become for me. It's really striving for excellence and, and uh, you know, not looking for perfection, but striving for excellence, like, like you're pointing out. And, and, you know, it is, that's part of the slowing down. Like what you just brought up is to slow down. That's how those thoughts pop into you. So whether you're, you know, meditating or going for a walk or slowing down in the forest, like if you can go on a hike or even when a, a friend of mine from Australia, he always said, if you don't meditate, then take longer showers. That's what he used to talk about because you can't think of anything else. And back then you couldn't bring electronics in now and all these phone companies. Now I've heard people would take their phone in the shower now because they're waterproof. They, I can't believe it, you know? Oh, no. Wow. But, yeah, because I mean, but that when he told me this, this is before electronics could be waterproof like that. And you, he, that's what, it, what his point is. You can't take your phone in the shower. You can't do this. And so it's just a moment with yourself. And I found that to be so true that, uh, that you know, it's, it is that, that, that moment with herself. And I have to go back before we get too far away from this. One thing that popped in my head when we were talking about death and, uh, and which we didn't, think about that this is what, where we were going to go yeah. in today's conversation. But, you know, one thing that I've also been reading about and looking about is that, you know, we kind of shield ourselves from death in, in society and in many cultures uh, today, you know, like not seeing it happen, or maybe you don't go to the hospital because you're afraid to see that, or you, you feel like you can't, uh, you know, I know even people that don't go to funerals because they don't want to see it. But, you know, there are many cultures before and some that still happen on this planet right now in modern age where they all gather around their loved ones and, and are with them every, every minute all the way till, till, till death. And I think fewer and fewer people do this now. I mean, I still hear stories even here in the United States of people that were with their family members when they died. But many, many are not. It's usually like always like one son or one daughter or one this. It's not like the whole family. And I think that also might add to this fear because uh, a lot of times we fear the unknown, right? So if we don't know what it's like, then it's, it's just shielding. And so I just have to bring it up, you know, like it's part of uh, this aw awareness. Um, yep. And I, I didn't want to get too far away from it. But, you know, like the fact that it's, you were there true. asking what that was like allowed you to find more information to feed to your brain to be like, okay, this is how it happens. It, literally let's um you know it's a you know a, yes <laughs> yeah it's i it was just it was swirling my head i had to like let that out and we can come back to now let's let that come to life right so here we are you know we're talking about more business and more life like how do we live and that's this comes back to the, what the shipibo people say is you cannot live until you die so here, like, wow, this whole podcast is like living that cycle, right? So, okay, let's get right to it. You know, we're the first 20 minutes of the podcast. Let's just get all the death stuff out. And then let's talk about that. Now let's talk about living. And then now we're talking about slowing down. And, you know, with, uh, you know, that brings that attention so that you can meditate. But, you know, I also, I always like to do this when I'm interviewing people. It's like, you know, I know that you had this tremendous experience uh, in Peru. And then that was life changing for you. You, um, but can you talk about how maybe that voice wasn't always as clear because when you, before that point, you know, how, how were you living? Like, you know, moving, it wasn't slow enough to hear these voices. I would, I would suppose. And just from previous conversations, can you share like 
kind of what it was like before, and then we can jump to where, where we are now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prior to um, that experience, I was always living through the voice or the eyes of other people without realizing it. And um, I was always chasing your acceptance, her acceptance, his acceptance. I didn't realize that that voice existed in me primarily. And that was the hardest thing to uh, step through for me to realize that, wow, Steve's opinion mattered more than my own. And once I got Steve's approval, that became my permission slip for me to accept myself and move forward. But I needed Steve's approval before I could give myself permission. But the thing I didn't realize was, first of all, that I was actually seeking your approval. I, that I was blinded to that. And once I realized that, I was able to see that your approval was the permission for me to approve myself. So it was always me giving myself that permission, me giving myself that inspiration, me giving myself that acceptance and self-love. And once I was able to take out the external need, I was able to source it from within. And you have so much more energy when you can do that. That's what I've come to learn because it takes, you're actually, in, when I'm chasing your acceptance, I'm investing energy outward. I'm actually like, like you can actually measure the amount of energy that you're investing into your focal points. And when you don't even realize what you're doing, you know, like you drain a lot of energy and then you don't really have time and space to, to do things for yourself because you're, you're depleted by the end of it. That's, that's amazing. I just one metaphor that came to me. It's like you have the key to your house and then you give the key to me and say, hey, give this to me when you think I'm ready. <laughs> and, then I have to, and then you have to like do whatever to hope that I'll give you the key back. And then you already had the key in the first place. Yeah. And you're so busy with your life. And like, how do I, you know, hey, Steve, you know, can I have the key? Uh, when I'm ready, Lee, you know, when I'm ready, I'll give you the key. You can have the key. You can have the key, but the key, it's always in my hand. It was your key in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's, and, and, that's what I've been saying a lot is perspective is key. Perspective is key. And why I say that is because we're, we're, so we're always stepping through doors in a new world. And perspective comes from an old Latin word, and it means the science of optics. It's the science of how we see the world. Now, if we break down science, any, any scientist can agree that all science really is is a study of observation over a period of time. You observe something enough times and you recognize patterns within that observation and you come to some type of analysis or hypothesis or whatever it is, whatever word they use for that. And with that, when I study my own perspective, when I see how I view the world, I be, over time, I begin to see patterns within my own subconscious, within my own way of thinking. And once I recognize that, I'm able to make certain slight adjustments that change the whole course of my trajectory. It's, it's amazing. And that's where... Uh... Uh, one person that you and I both have been able to spend time with is Carl Bukite. And he says that all life is feedback. And then, and then if you couple that with all the choice that we're we've been talking about this whole podcast, then that's what gives you a tremendous amount of, of thought towards what, where you want to go, because you can choose something, then get the feedback from that, then choose again. Right. So yep. you're, you're choose and, and that's, that's where, and that's where slowing down comes in because sometimes you're running so fast, you pass by the feedback. It's always there. Like we're getting this information all the time to better ourselves. Like you said, use the word to be impeccable, like to do that, that all that comes from this science, right? This observation. And so we're taking these things into practice in our own life. And, you know, if you, if you think about a scientist, you know, depending on what science they're participating in but almost all of them it's partly slowing down it's yeah. like inspecting something looking at the deepest level breaking it down to the smallest step so that you can uh pick it apart and and do it so even right now we're doing a bit of science right because yep. we're i'm asking you questions and we're picking apart different parts of our life so that other coming back to what you said at the very beginning of this podcast is uh we're sharing our own stories so that other people don't have to repeat those um so anyway, this all comes into the smallest thing. You don't have to be doing this mega science experiment in a lab to have results in your life. You can do it right now. Yeah, the, the science experiment in the lab is a result of each result in the, you know what I mean? It's, it's a result of being in life. It's not that we always get attached to this big idea and this big vision. I mean, it happens to me all the time. And then typically when it doesn't come, I slow down and then I see, oh, I got to take each step along the way. I can't just jump into this big lab right now. I'm not there yet. And that's a beautiful thing because I got to be ready for that too. Right. It's cool. Actually, um, 
speaking on what you're saying, I was actually, I was hanging out with a nuclear physicist, um, I don't know, like a month ago. And I asked him, I said, he's like 70 years old, a phenomenal guy. And I said, what is the most mind blowing thing in physics that you have learned that still blows your mind to this day? And he goes, how much time do you got? <laughs> right. I'll break it down real quick. He basically showed me the math equation, the scientific math equation that proves it as fact that there are in fact an infinite number of realities present right now. And he said, some people get there through deep meditation. Some people get there through psychedelic experiences myself, I got there through physics. And he goes, once I had that realization that there are in fact infinite amounts of realities out there, I went shopping for the reality that I want. That's powerful. Right? Because you can get lost in all of that. So in that moment, you can just, cre you know, this is where we are. This goes back to the present. That it's a gift, this moment, because we can wander way out and, and be in wonderment or wonder what could be, should be, where could I be, instead of just be. Yeah. And um, what's cool to add to that is he also showed me the math equation, and I don't remember the math equation. I mean, you could look it up, quantum theory and stuff, but he also showed me the math equation that proves that the observer is playing more, like playing a huge part in whatever it observes. So like I'm actually affecting reality by observing it. But the only way to actually authentically observe it, to, 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 to truthfully observe it is to be present, right. is to be in the moment. And um, this is cool because a couple of years ago, I was hanging out with um, a Grammy award-winning producer, a music producer. Like he's worked with Jay-Z. Uh, yeah, Jay-Z and a bunch of other guys, right? And this guy was wild. He, he goes to me, he's like, Lee, everything's out there already. When you're making music, all you have to do is observe it. All you got to do is be present. He goes, you'll notice a symphony everywhere. He goes, I'm driving in my car. And then I'm, I, he goes, <laughs> I can hear my car sputtering. But then I can hear somebody outside in the next car, this and that. And then he goes, and then I look at the red light, green light. And everything is just happening in perfect harmony and perfect symphony. And then um, a couple of days later, he's in a ceremony. And I'm outside sitting on the bench, just looking in the jungle, looking at the trees. And he comes out and he's like, Lee, oh my God, you got to hear the shaman's voice. He's like, can you hear their voice? Okay, now look at that. Now listen to the crickets over here. And he goes, now listen to the trees. They're just shuffling out there. He goes, do, 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 do. And he's showing me how it's all actually naturally happening in harmony. And, and, and I'm seeing this and I'm seeing this guy's, this, this guy's already an accredited musician and he's attributing it to his ability to observe and be present. And he's proving it to me right now because I am seeing the harmony in the symphony. And then he's like, now check this out. I guarantee you didn't hear those monkeys back there. And I'm like, damn, you're right. There are monkeys back there. <laughs> And now they're making noise and they're all a part of the symphony. And there's so much more actually out there when we're present with ourselves, when we're in that observe, observation state. It's so simple yet. I mean, as you and I both know how profound it is to stay there and what a journey that is to maintain. However, when it's maintained, magic actually opens up. It's so amazing. I, I went outside yesterday so I've been trying to go live more and just, you know, be on uh, and share, like you were talking about, just sharing more of what what's going on in my life. And so I went on Instagram live on my phone, went outside and uh, it's springtime here. And so the birds are just like chirping like crazy. And I stopped and I just held the camera there and I just said, oh, breathe, breathe in with me here for a second. And uh, I said, this wasn't what I was expecting to do, but just listen. And I just was, and I sat there for a little bit and I just let all the birds chirp on Instagram and who knows, if, you know, it was just, it was, and I just, and I brought that up. Then it became, and I was, I, it's kind of like this podcast. I knew that we were going to have some amazing conversation, but I never know where we're going to go. And so when I just pressed that record button, I just let it go. And uh, that was about, you know, slowing, slowing down and connecting. And it's a definite huge theme in my life. That's why I've got all these turtles surrounding me to, to even remind myself because I've been such a go guy. Like, you know, um, 
coming from a whole family line of workaholics. It's like, if you're not doing things, then you're not worthy. You know, yep. and that's what I had to come away from. And that goes back to like having that acceptance of others, what you were bringing up, you know, for us, you know, cause I've done that too. I've given my key for my house away to other people waiting for them to give it back to me because I wanted their acceptance. And, um, and it's amazing that this all couples together. It's interesting how this, uh, our conversation has kind of been shooting around, but ultimately it comes back to the power of you and choosing now. Yeah. Choosing now. When you're here right now, you see the world as a reflection. And nature, um, it's apparent that nature is our greatest reflection. We are of nature. It's, uh, I was just, uh, we just did one of my events uh, virtual that we've never had done um, before. Cool. And then- it was it was amazing yeah and like we got to help people we had people from all around the world like so we lit, like when we had our meal break halfway through the the workshop um because it was full day workshops then uh some people were eating breakfast some people were eating lunch and some people were eating dinner at that same time that's how good it was a global conference and i've had people from around the globe come to my workshops but i've never had them all at the same time in their location <laughs> coming cool. to us so it was amazing and then on the last day i put a fire on and so we were talking about, you know, how things go back to the earth and um, even with fire and that transformation. And then I was saying, you know, that's why, I, you know, when I die, whether I'm burned or, you know, if, I, if I'm um, cremated or not, I just want to go back to the earth because we are creatures of this earth as well. Like we're made of these things. And, you know, when you look at, you know, the leaves of a tree and how they mulch up and go back to the earth, how animals die and, you know, go back into the earth. And I think, you know, it's kind of sad actually to me, and this is one of the things that many people put themselves in these caskets that are like, you know, holding them from touching the earth ever again, you know? Yeah, Um, I've wondered that. Like, you know, I mean, ultimately like why were we we buried? It was putting (laughs) us back to the earth, like letting it all go back to the earth. So anyway, they've had these new things I saw and I haven't looked too much into it, but you, they put you in a pod with a tree where like, you become a tree. Yeah. I think that's yep. what I want to do. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't but tell it, that to uh, the so, casket producers. Yeah. Like, so yeah, they're, they're not happy with our podcast. <laughs> they got to evolve uh, with the times too. Yeah. Major money. So just sell trees, casket makers, sell trees. <laughs> um, ultimately all, all of this, um, uh, coming back to this, um, how, what's changed in your life that you've been able to give yourself this permission to, to one, be yourself and to slow down. And those are two different questions, but we can pick whichever one you want to talk about first. You know, there's so many factors. Like I can, I can explain that in, um, in a whole bunch of different array of topics, which one specifically would you, well, I guess I'm looking for like, uh, let me get context here. I'm yeah. looking for the listener that's out there right now. And they're, you know, they're, um, they're busy, right? They're, uh, maybe they're working a job or, um, you know, have a family dealing with their kids and we can get caught up in all that doing. And so maybe it's more, um, you know, what's, what's the recommendation to take the first step to slow down enough so they could hear themselves? Because I think that's what happens to most of us in society. We get caught up in the economics or, the the doing and we don't get ourselves the permission to think the Mm. way you and i are and so what would you what if you could if you could share with all all of what you've learned what how can they take the first step what would you recommend or, or how did it work for you i guess whichever comes the biggest challenge when it comes to initially practicing the art of slowing down is seeing actual value in it and progression in it because initially and there's still times where like i'm frantic And I have to remind myself to slow down. And initially, I'll catch an instinct where I feel guilty or I feel like I'm actually not moving forward or I feel like I'm being lazy or, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm not actually getting all this stuff done. But when I'm able to remember, no, 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 this is a part of it. This isn't separate from my progression. This is a part of it. I'm able to feel comfortable by slowing down. I'm able to see that slowing down is actually the next step. Slowing down is actually moving forward. But initially the mind jumps in because I've accustomed myself to pushing and pushing and pushing and moving forward and moving forward and moving forward. So when I do slow down, I'm like, oh my God, 
I'm, I'm not getting anything done. I'm an idiot. I'm, t- I'm not actually utilizing this opportunity. Like, they're, they're the mind. I like, oh my God, does it ever judge what it's doing, you know? Mm-hmm. But once, like anything that's uncomfortable, once we do it enough times, we become acquainted with that and we become comfortable with it. So if there's anybody right now that feels very fast paced and they don't feel that they can slow down, I would say, ask yourself if you see value in slowing down. And if you don't study that art of slowing down a little bit more, see value in it. Because if you can see value in it, it'll create a lot more comfort in doing it. It's a progressive practice. It's not a step backwards. It's actually probably six steps forward from where you actually are. It's, it's so amazing. It takes a while. And, and you, you, you hit on the exact way I wanted to answer the question, by the way, because I was looking for like that value. How did you find the value to, to give yourself? Because it's all about priorities, right? So if we're not giving ourselves the time to slow down, it's because we haven't prioritized it. We haven't given it the weight that it deserves because we think it's more important to be doing. Um, and so for me, this is for me how yeah. I see it. And so as I started to see the value, it was in the slowing down that my power came. And how I best uh, share this with people is, you know, many of us have, have had like a really long day or even pulled an all-nighter. And at the end of that time, you're trying to finish something and you're like, I've got to do it. And then <laughs> you finally break down and go to bed, right? And you go to bed and you sleep and then you wake up in the morning. The thing that you were trying to solve for maybe hours sometimes, you solve in like five minutes. It's that yes. power of rest, right? It's yeah. that power. And now as I work with CEOs and people that have been in this rat race and I have them slow down and I get them to take more vacations and holidays and then they come back and I'm like, how is it? And they're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing, Steve. I'm thinking better. I'm making smarter decisions. I can have so much more clarity where, where, I, where I didn't before. I'm making less mistakes yeah. because you know when you run really fast, you might trip up and that momentum keeps you going because you just get up and go again. But what if you actually saw the hole and you didn't trip in it at all? because you're going slow enough to see it. And so in that, then in that moment, what's also transformative is I go, wouldn't you like this for all your people? Like in the whole company? You just right? And then me. they realize grinding all their staff for as many hours as they can is not purposeful either. It's like having a drill with low battery. Like how fast can you drill the holes? Like at the beginning, it's like, rear, 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 and you're drilling all these holes. And then then uh, the battery goes low. Do you say, oh, I've got 10 more holes. I'm going to get it. And it's like, you know, like I'm um, doing yeah. the best voices I can here. And then and you, and, you, and you can't drill in. But what if you paused? You're going to slow down for a minute, right? You have to slow down to go get a new battery. But you get that new battery, how, fa- how much faster will you get that job then? And so I find tremendous amount of value. And even on my last holiday, we went for four weeks and I was speaking in Africa. And so we built a whole holiday around it. And when I go that long, I plan to, to work a bit because it's a month and checking in with my team. Well, the first week I got there, I was planning on having internet and then the internet didn't work the whole first week. So in my <laughs> old days, I, I, I would have spent all this time trying to find internet, go here, go there. And part of me was like, oh, the universe is telling me like, slow down. You know, so now I even get cues from it and I, I did slow down and, um, you know, there's part of me that was like, what impact is this going to have? But I knew that it was something right. And some of the things we're doing right now in our business downloaded to me during that time of stillness, during that time of quiet. And also my team made it out without me being there. You know, there was parts of me that were like, oh, I should have been on that meeting, but they all Ooh, made it through and everything step. worked out. And now I, I'm smarter for it. I'm making better decisions. That's such a gift to be able to be given too, because um, a lot of people with teams, they, they, they feel they need to get involved. They need to get involved. And for you to see that everything flows as you step out, that, that, that is a phenomenal gift, I believe, from the universe to you to be able to trust deeper. Yeah. It, That's and cool. It, and that is it. You know, it's like, you know, if you together has been a big word for me, uh, it's definitely one of our core values, but it's been really big. And, you know, I love it. And it's interesting here. I'm bringing this up when I spoke in Namibia. So I'm in Africa, but it's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Ooh, so true. It's, uh, it's brilliant. So um, imagine so, even the, even the so, human body. Yeah. If, if the human body were just one cell, we wouldn't have this experience. 
Yeah, done. <laughs> done. What is that? Plankton? Do they have one cell? I don't know. I don't know, but they're not it, going pretty far. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a different experience than being human. So you, um, so with all this value now, uh, and and by the way, my my wife when we were dating, she always said you never stop and smell the roses. Like, cause I was always go, you know, and. And I appreciate her so much more now, like that she saw that way back when, when I didn't see it, you yeah. know, and, and, and now that echoes in my head, like her saying that, and it's like, slow down, look at that flower, look at that plant, look at that tree. And, and just, I mean, in awe of nature. I mean, it, and it's effortless. Like a tree doesn't work hard to grow. It just oh, grows. It, it just, just grows. A month, and there's chaos. There's chaos in that growth. There's storms, there's wind, there's snow sometimes, right? Like there's so many elements, but the tree doesn't process that. The tree isn't afraid to die. Even when the tree falls down, it becomes the soil. Like it just consistently flows with whatever life throws at it. And even when death comes to the tree, that's life being thrown at it because the tree evolves into the soil. It's absolutely phenomenal. Well, and I even just was told that when a tree dies, all the leftover energy that's there disperses to all the neighboring trees. That's really cool. That's, uh, it's in these mushroom documentaries that they're doing because they're saying now mushrooms are the, like the internet of nature. Like, so through mushrooms, they're proving now that they communicate to all the trees and it connects all of the plants. And it also is the largest organism I was reading about that the biggest uh, mushroom is in, in the state of Oregon in the United States and that they found thus far. And yeah. it's bigger than a whale. Wow. Underground. Underground. Yeah. Really? It's like massive. Yeah. It, it's, uh, yeah. That was in Michael Pollan's uh, book. Um, That's cool. What's the title of it? Anyway, but it's in other books too, like, cause he was sourcing that material from others. Um, so, Oh man! Don't, anyway, tell, just, don't tell Mario and Luigi that. Yeah, right. <laughs> the Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom. Yeah, the uh, it's. This is all. It's fascinating. We don't. We don't even know. All. Uh, I mean, this is the thing. The more that we know, the more we don't know. I mean, and that's and that's the way it is. And when you you were bringing up the physicists that you were talking to, quantum physics proves that. Like the bigger you go, the more the deeper you go in science, um, the more spiritual it gets. Because if you look quantum physics is spirituality in my mind. I mean, it's like, it's, uh, it's the things that are undefined. It's like you said, the multiverse that there's, you know, all these different things going out there, which just brings more and more choice. And if you get, you can get choice burnout, right? Because like they, they even say this in marketing, like now you go into the store and there's like 50 different toothpaste or yeah. you can have so many different things. And then you, it, with that, you make no choice. Right. Yeah. And so to have this physicist going back to that story, he goes and he sees that everything's infinite, right? Like unlimited choice, right? And then he's like, what do I want? Yeah. What do I want right now? And, and yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the question. And, if, and then if you can just center yourself on that and, and bringing us full circle into the, <clears throat> into the present moment. So how do, you, Lee, how do you use all these tools that you've learned and all this focus to keep yourself in the present moment? Like, is there any, like, tips or things that that you found that are useful yeah self-love self-love because um i also fall out of the moment many 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 times over and when i love myself i'm able to look at those parts that do fall and that enables me to remember to stay present when i'm not loving myself I have expectations out of myself. And then when I don't meet those expectations, I judge myself. And that becomes this vicious cycle of like feeling disconnected from who I know I actually am. And I am perfectly flawed. And when I can embrace those flaws, it, it enables me the space to just get back to presence, get back to presence, get back to presence, get back to presence. And I think um, one thing that holds a lot of people back is that, is when, is when we break, is when we fall. And the paradox about that is, is if anybody goes to the gym, like they'll understand that the only way to actually grow a muscle is to tear it apart. So those, the, the, those destructive moments typically are the moments that, that seem to pull me out of the present moment, but it also propels me back to the moment with a lot more wisdom. 
So when I practice looking at myself in the mirror and saying, I love you, I'm able to accept myself a lot more naturally over and over and over and over. And it takes those moments where I fall, it minimizes those moments. And when I do fall, I'm able to get back up a lot sooner when I practice the art of self-love. That's beautiful, brother. It's giving yourself permission to be you. Yeah. right? To love yourself the way that you are. And that's that unconditional love that we talk about in relationships and definitely we want with ourselves. And, and it's, this goes back to that feedback. Everything in life is feedback. None of us would be walking around if we didn't fall. Like then everyone would be crawling around earth. Like, yeah. oh, you'd stand up once, fall down and be like, oh, to hell with that. Yeah. We'll just crawl. You well, know? If we just started flying. We wouldn't appreciate the process of what it actually took to get there. Right. You know, well, um, I've had that. Like, there's been other comedians that make fun of that when people are so pissed off that their air, air their flight is like five minutes late. Like, we're in the air right now, like flying thirty thousand feet, and you're complaining that you're going to be five minutes like, late. You know, like I mean, this is a freaking miracle, right? Yeah. I'm <laughs> recognizing it as a miracle, where somebody is recognizing it as a burden. I mean, they're both in the same situation. One is choosing to see it a different way. And they're also having two different experiences in the same situation. And once, you know, once you can see that, it's like, okay, what, what, do you, what would you like? Would you like, like, this is happening anyways. Would you like to enjoy it, embrace it, and gain a lot along the way? Or you want to be upset? Yeah. You know, I have to bring it to a personal moment. So on this last trip that I told you I was going, uh, yeah. I brought my Native American flutes. And I've always traveled with them, and I bring them on. And then the one the, one of the women like took the flute and she was like bouncing in her hand and i'm like oh can you can you please not do that and i sh maybe i shouldn't have said that to the the tsa person because then she was like then she got mad she like took the flute i could see her face change because i i told her but i you know i'm t i'm carrying these flutes on i didn't throw them in my check bag because i don't want them to be uh but then she comes back she's like you can't take this in it could be used as a weapon and i was like Are, <laughs> really like i i've always brought this on and you know and i'm sorry i feel myself getting emotional about the whole thing too and then i was like can i talk to a manager or something like i've always flown with these i, I do not want to check these so then um she goes to get the manager and i and i noticed that mm -hmm. i'm definitely uh triggered and i'm definitely getting emotional about this and so i just I just took some deep breaths and I said, Hey, what do you want right now, Steve? And I was like, I want to take these flutes on the plane with me. And I said, okay, I'm just going to, and this is in my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm going to let all this go, let all this go. Cause I could see where like maybe an argument was going to emerge. And even that maybe she wanted that she was I, having fun with this a little bit. I could, I could feel. So I let all that go. And then this, the manager comes up and he's like, so you're the guy with the flutes. And I'm like, yeah, I am. He's like, I just want to come over and see him. I play flute as well. You know, but, uh, and then he starts talking about the flutes and like who made my flutes. And he's like, oh, that looks like one of mine, but it wasn't the same flute maker. And we're talking. And then he looked at her and uh, said, I fly with my flutes. This is a musical instrument. And uh, but then ultimately it comes back to that officer's choice. So it says, but you were the officer checking. So it's your choice. And then um, and and she let me go. And I have to add one more part to the story. I actually. Um, I actually told her, I said, Hey, I'm sorry if I was, you know, telling you what to do with the thing, but you know, these flutes were made in a certain key. And I, if I bang them around, then it, it, or they get fractured, then they're not going to play that musical note, you know? So, so, um, you know, and so I did say that while we were waiting for the thing. So I kind of calmed the situation. And then she said, um, okay, you can go. So I went with the, with the flute and, uh, the thing that happened next is why I even told this story. But I mean, like, my, I, I said, Oh, you know, I love traveling. I love going and seeing new places, being with new people, learning. Um, but I don't like the part about getting on the, the plane and everything, you know, like going through the yeah. checkpoints and all the security. Yeah. And then my son says, that's my favorite part, dad. I mean, like of all the parts of flying, it's the biggest part of the adventure. What are you going to do? You sit on the plane. Um, you know, you're, you're sitting on the plane the whole time. You're just sitting in a chair. How is that fun? Like going through security is the m biggest part of the adventure because you never know what's going to happen or what they're going to ask you or that's check amazing. your bag. He's like, that's the part that is. And I was like, what the F right now? Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're like mind blowing. That's his favorite part because the oh. rest of the time he's bored sitting on the freaking plane. Yeah. Yeah. Totally flip side of like our own reality. The part that 
uh, I just want to relax on the plane and I don't want to go through checkpoints. And his is like the adventure of going through the checkpoints. Oh my God. Master Domenico does it again. Like unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he totally. And, and I, cause I was already, I was triggered by that whole thing and the flutes and I was happy that I had my flutes and I, uh, and I, I basically, uh, he totally, it was a, a moment of, of uh, amazingness yeah. and that I was able to see that. And he totally made me reflect in a different way. So it's a great it, example of just like, having an inevitable experience and looking at it differently, which creates a brand new experience within the same, in the same moment. It's, it's totally, it's totally it. And that we can manifest what we want because I totally believe that was manifestation because I could have gotten an argument with her, had to go back out security and not have my flutes with me, but I calmed myself down because ultimately in that moment too, I was vibrating of like, oh crap, she's going to make me take my flute out. And if I kept that going in my head, then I would have been like manifesting that. But instead I breathed and said, what do I want? I want to take the flutes on the plane with me. And so then I just held that space. And then sure enough, what coincidence, it's not a coincidence. The guy comes up and he's a flute player. And then we're like geeking so out cool. over my flutes, right? You know, it I was that's so cool. And that, that's, you know, that comes back down to resonance. You know, once you tune back into yourself, you, you meet that resonance on the outside, like, that's literally how reality works. It's, it's magnetically drawn. You, you met somebody who was going to assist you with that. And yeah. It, and, you know, the thing is, Lee, why probably this story I'm, I'm reflecting right now. Like, so I'm uh, talking about observing. Yeah, yeah. I'm observing, like, and you get better and better at this. Like, Lee and I have been doing this for years now. The more we reflect. But in this moment that I'm even sharing this story, it was a reflection that I could change in a moment. Right before I would have like been reflecting after I went out of the, of the security checkpoint, wrapped my flutes in bubble wrap, had to check it. And then I would said, what could I do better next time? You know, like, oh, I did it in the moment. I'm like, wait a minute, stop, time out. This is not what I want. Let me change oh. now. And I changed in the moment, didn't have to go out the checkpoint, got released with my flutes, got to be re reunited with my family because they went to the gate. I was like held back, you know, all those things. And it was in a, in a moment and it was really quick. Like they were just getting to the gate and I walked a little faster and I caught up to them and they were expecting to be sitting there for a while while dad's getting, you know, harassed or something. Yeah. You know? So I, I, I changed it in the, in the moment. So, and we are getting close to the end of our time and you and I could talk for hours, but I'm just curious. Let's, let's pick on this moment now. Like what, how do you suggest someone change in the, in the moment, you know, so that, they don't have to go through something they don't want. If they notice it, if they're like, wait a minute, I'm going through something I don't want. Now, now what do we do? Acknowledging that. Absolutely. Okay. This is not my preferred state. That's okay. I don't have to judge it because I know that I have options. I don't have to judge this state. I can set intentions. I can set that trajectory in my mind. So it comes back down to, you know, like Carl and what these guys talk about. What would I like? What would I like in this moment? Set those intentions and absolutely let it go. You know, I've been able to accomplish a lot of things in my life just by setting intentions and letting go of expectations. And when you let go of expectations, that's the permission slip to be in the present moment because you're totally trusting what unfolds. And the future is a figment of the mind. The only way to actually get the future that we want is to let go of that idea in our mind of what we think the future is because the future only exists in the present moment. And the only thing that's actually in the present moment is the breath and the heartbeat. So when we do tap into the present moment, we enter a reality that's way more congruent to our authentic intentions. This is just like that. This is the secondary. We can set those intentions, but once we let go of expectations, then every moment becomes embraced. And then we begin to feel that end result in the present moment. It's like taking what you want back into the moment right now, but I also at times acknowledging that this isn't what I want and that's okay. This that, is getting me there. That's so beautifully said. It's uh, because now breaking down that situation, the first thing I did was breathe. I noticed myself getting worked up and getting upset. And then I said, wait a minute, breathe, Steve. And that's how I started to take back control. It was first deep breaths while I was waiting. And it was perfect time too because I had to wait for her to get a manager. And that gave me the moment to be with myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was a speaker once. Um, she was talking about how um, she was in a very heavy situation wrapping her baby around in a diaper. 
Oh, no, in a, in a towel as a diaper, like very, very poor, very broke. And she said she made this choice that she was never going to live like this again, especially for her son. She made a promise to her son. And then she said, I had to tell myself that I am willing to kill every part of who I think I am so that I can provide the life that I want for my family. I, I just read an Alan Watts thing and I won't be able to find it right now in the minutes that we have left, but he had a line just like that. He said, in order to have what we want, we have to let go of what we imagine we are. Yeah. Can I um, read you a poem called I was afraid? That we I can, we have about like a minute left. How long is it? It might be a little bit more than a minute. Well, we can go to or something. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's close with a poem. So <clears throat> this has been uh, amazing. I'll say some closing words right after, but okay, go for cool. it, Lee. You'll like this. I was afraid. And then I remembered that I am an infinite being having a human experience. And my time here on earth is temporary. Yet the essence of who I am, this is eternal. For I am all things light and everything dark. I am good. I am bad. I am thoughts. And I am so much more. I am stardust exploding across the galaxy. I am the moon magnetically pulling the oceans in all directions. I am a tidal wave. I am a fraction of a grain of sand on a vast beach on an undiscovered island, untouched by civilization. I am searching for harmony within havoc. I am harmonious. I am a maverick. I am more than these words. I am nothing, which makes me everything. I am love. I am fear. I am something. I am who I am, making me perfect as I am. I was afraid. And then I said, I am more than this. I am who I am. It's beautiful, Lee. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I even have to say this. We're here we are talking about slowing down so much today and to take the time to slow down and write your words. Yeah. And then share them with others. Um is is an amazing gift in in itself. The hardest part of my morning ritual wasn't working out. Even meditation was difficult at first, but I got through it. But the hardest part for me was writing to take the time to write and to slow down and even make my words legible. Cause even sometimes I write it scribble because I want to be so fast. Yeah. So, um, thank you for giving yourself permission to take your time to write your words down and thoughtfully in such a, in such a way to share with the world. Thanks it's, brother. It, it's a gift. It's oh, a you're gift. Welcome, man. It's an honor to share. It's it's always fun. It's been beautiful, and you know, I think the things that are the biggest takeaways for all of you listening right now is, you know, here we are on more business, more life, and I take this show and let it go where it goes, and you know, sometimes we talk more about business tactics, and sometimes we talk about more about life tactics. But I'll tell you what, this this was all because when you take these tactics that Lee and I just talked about. Uh, on on today's podcast and you apply that to your business life to you to your your personal life you will find transformation it's definitely happened in my life and i know it's happened in lee's life and um it's it's amazing so thank you for sharing this time with us lee it's it's been a pleasure having you on the show how can people reach you if they want to find you yeah um you can find me at leeallenpurcell.com and also, I'm going to be starting up a podcast. I just had an interview with, uh, with a, an ex-U.S. Marine. And I'm going to be talking to Michelle Masters next week, too, actually. Nice. And it's called um, Higher Perspective. So Beautiful. I'm going to be posting that up on Facebook. So the Higher we'll Perspective podcast. Awesome. Yeah. Elevating consciousness by sharing the power of perspective. That's Beautiful. And uh, we'll definitely be listening in and we'll put all that information in the show notes as well so people can find cool. you. So um, that will uh, that'll be, that'll be beautiful. So right on, brother. 
Beautiful. Everyone, uh, look for, I'm so glad that you listened to the show. Um, please uh, connect with us and we will, uh, you know, let us know what was most important for you out of this show so that we can continue to make amazing shows and answer some of your questions. And as always, until next time, remember to choose gratitude and create freedom. Boom. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the More Business, More Life podcast. I hope you got value. And if you did, we have so many more things for you at stevenopleton.com. You'll be able to connect with us on social media. We are active. You can ask us questions. And then on top of that, I want to give you a really big gift. And it truly is. We want to give so much value. We have an offering. It's a program called clear path to customers. It's the same way that we attract wow clients and only working with the right people, the people we want to. And it's transformed my business into millions more in revenue with the right people and my clients. And we're doing it absolutely free. So you can go to stevenopleton.com and grab that. You just got to put, put in your information. We'll send it to you promptly. And that again is on stevenopleton.com. I look forward to having you on the next show. Until then, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.